What's up, Thrashers, and welcome back to Five Questions with Levi. This is episode number 23. We're just three weeks away from the halfway point of one year of doing this show. Three weeks from today will be episode 26. 26 weeks is half of 52 weeks in a year, so we're getting close to that point. But yeah, we have reached episode 23, and of course, before I get started, a couple of things. First, I have relaunched my Patreon page, so if you guys want to become a patron, link will be in the description box, so check out my new Patreon. I've got some cool perks on there, such as getting shouted out on my videos at the beginning and at the end of every video. Also, perks for getting some physical items, like a, perhaps an exclusive Thrash Maniac 99 t-shirt that will be custom made, and a wrestling DVD of my choosing. So, sign up for Patreon, people. I need the help! <laughs> and then second off, for those who want to ask me a question for episode 24 next week, be sure to send those questions in the comments section below. But without further ado, let's get started! Red Racer 1985 asks, Who are your favorite Bush nationwide Xfinity drivers of today or all time? Well, perhaps my favorite driver in that series of all time, looking back at what he was able to do prior to coming up to Cup, I would say Martin Truex Jr. Because he spent two years, two full years, in the Bush series for Junior's Team Chance 2 Motorsports and managed to win two championships and beat cup guys so i thought it was impressive what he was able to do back in 2004 and especially in 2005. now as far as current favorites go i really like justin allgaier i also really like john hunter nemechek daniel hamrick's kind of up there too and Elliot Sadler's in the mix, but if I had to choose one that I really like currently, it's Allgaier. In fact, he could be neck and neck with Truex for all-time favorite in the series as well, so that's my answer to that, Qualls. Space Metal Ferrari 248 asks, What do you think is the most toxic fan base slash hate base in pop culture? That's a tough one. Uh, I would probably go with... DC fans because especially since 2013 like the DC fans try and do everything in their power to put down Marvel because ooh, all this blah 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 that I'm not gonna get into because DC fans just can't accept the fact that their movies are nowhere near as good as Marvel movies and the reason being there are several reasons for why DC movies in recent years haven't been as haven't been quite good since Dark Knight Rises, and it's mostly because of <clears throat> mostly because of one thing, and that is they rush everything. Like they don't take their time to develop their movies properly. I think the only movie that I've I haven't seen it, but I've heard was done very well was Wonder Woman. But other than that. What DC movie that's come out since Dark Knight Rises besides Wonder Woman has been that good? Because I heard Justin, Justice League was pretty crap, and the Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, which was in competition with Captain America Civil War, didn't do that well. So it's like, DC fans just need to accept the fact that Marvel movies are kicking your movie's ass. Now, TV shows... DC has the advantage, I will give them that, but when it comes to movies, sorry DC, but you just can't compete. And that's the truth. Fat Fuck Behind a Burning Asshole asks, Would you ever consider doing a video series about NASCAR what-if scenarios in the future, such as what if Spingate 2013 didn't happen, what if Red Bull Racing was still around, what if Dale Sr. was still alive, etc.? I know Kamikaze Games did a few videos like this, but a regular series of these videos, topics new and old, would be fun. Well, the problem with me doing like a what if series on really anything, whether it be pro wrestling or racing or anything of that variety, it would be it would require too much work in my brain to try and figure out what the hell would have happened if so and so was still around or so and so didn't happen, if so and so had died, and all this and that, like I just 
I don't think I have the brain power to do a series like that on a regular basis. Hell, I sometimes even struggle keeping up with this because I always, for some reason, my brain doesn't remind me that, hey, I gotta do five questions episode. Which is why, the time of recording this, it's Tuesday morning and I just got out of the shower and I just realized, crap, I need to record. But I do it for you guys because I do love making these videos every week for to answer fan questions. But sometimes my brain just farts and forgets to do them, and I end up doing them at the last minute. But nonetheless, I still do them. So because of lack of brain power, I probably would be the least qualified to do what-if scenario videos like that. Because I just, I just don't think I have the brains to really come to any kind of conclusion of, say, what would have happened if Spingate didn't happen in 2013 and so on and so forth, so... Sorry, but I don't see that series really ever happening. Daniel Rafael De Jesus asks, What is your most disappointing or worst albums of 2018 in hard rock and heavy metal? Mine is Machine Head's Catharsis, Five Finger Death Punch, and Justice for None. Well, if I had to choose one for this year that was pretty shit, it would be the Machine Head album. Like, what the fuck happened to Machine Head? Like, I heard Bloodstone and Diamonds in 2014, and I thought it was a pretty damn good CD. <laughs> or a pretty damn good album, I should say. And then, of course, the two before that, Unto the Locust and especially The Blackening, were heralded as, like, modern classics in metal today. But all of a sudden, they go trying to be like Limp Bizkit and all this crap, and it's like, Rob Flynn... And you know what? I'm personally glad Machine Head's breaking up because after releasing an abomination like that, yeah. If I was in Rob Flint's position and I was pissed off about how that album went, I'd break up the band too because that was just pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. I can't comment on Five Finger Death Punch because personally I've been, I've been, I've had enough of Five Finger Death Punch, especially after hearing the song Boots and Blood. Like, what the fuck was that? So... I would probably say yes, the Machine Head album was definitely the worst, and I don't think any can top it, to be honest. In fact, I could even argue that was maybe the worst metal album of all time. No joke. It was garbage. Motorsports Fan 17 asks, Should the NASCAR Xfinity series add either Martinsville or Sonoma to their schedule? P.S. What are your thoughts on Sonoma's track layout being changed to resemble the old Sears Point layout next year? Well, as far as the layout for Sonoma, it's going to be intriguing to see how running the old carousel from the Sears Point days is going to do for the cars nowadays, especially with this package that's starting next year. Now, as far as if the Xfinity series should run that or Martinsville, it would be cool if Xfinity ran Martinsville, because if I remember the last time they ran Xfinity and Xfinity... Bush or Nationwide was like 2006, and that race was only notable because that was uh, Daryl Wal uh, Wallace, Daryl Waltrip's final NASCAR start driving the Aaron Stream machines. So that was really the only thing to note back then. It would be cool if they went to Martinsville because, I mean, the last Martinsville race and Cup back in the spring, it was good, but not as good as it was before. But perhaps with how much better the Xfinity cars are, perhaps the race at Martinsville and Xfinity would be one of the best races of the year. Sonoma, on the other hand, I mean, Xfinity goes to a lot of road courses already, so why not throw Sonoma into the mix? And one thing with Sonoma, I must add, with the West Coast swing they do, it should come after Daytona. Like, I've said it, and Kamikaze has said it before. Atlanta needs to be moved to, like, March or April. Stop running it immediately after Daytona, because it's a terrible time for weather in Atlanta, and you could do the West Coast Swing in between Daytona and Atlanta, and you could do, like, Phoenix, then Vegas, then Auto Club, and then Sonoma. Why isn't Sonoma part of the West Coast Swing is my question. So, that's just my thoughts on all that, so there you go. 
And thank you guys so much for watching episode number 23 of 5 Questions with Levi. A reminder, I have a new Patreon page. Link is in the description box if you want to check it out and become a patron and get some cool perks. And also, if you want to ask me a question for episode 24 next week, be sure to send them in the comments section below. But until next time, peace out, and I will see you very, very soon.